All right, let's take a look at another little problem here dealing with area. So let's say you have a swimming pool. Yes, I know some swimming pools are going to have different shapes. But we're going to do the standard rectangle swimming pool. 12 meters by 16 meters is the side length of our swimming pool. That's somewhere around 36 by 48 feet. A little bit larger because a meter is a little bit larger than 3 feet. So, 12 meters by 16 meters. In this situation, we're going to put a border around our swimming pool. Thus, the reason that we called some of these problems border problems. This border is going to be made out of concrete. We're going to put concrete around our swimming pool. Our length or our width of our border is going to be the same all the way around. Yes, I know, again, sometimes things get a little more interesting, and we could make it twice as big down here or three times as big up here if we wanted to put some you know, patio furniture out there around our swimming pool, but we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep the same width all the way around, so this width all the way around is X. And so what I showed you guys in class is I gave you a little formula. I said the area of the big minus the area of the small is equal to the area of the border. And I told you you can figure out the formula for the area of the border by doing the area of the big shape minus the area of the small shape. In this case, the area of our big shape is going to be a length times a width. The area of our small shape is also going to be a length times a width. We'll start off with our small shape. It's pretty easy here. Our small shape is 12 by 16. So we just take 12 times 16 for our small shape. Our big shape, we have to consider the entire length all the way down through here and the entire width all the way across through here. And so what I showed you with these is just very similar to those revenue problems that we did where you have an M, X plus B. Guys, for the length all the way across here, you've got 16 for your original swimming pool, plus you've got this X, and you've got this X. So what you have is you have 16 plus 2Xs, or M, X plus B, the beginning amount, for the swimming pool and what you're changing it by moving two X's on either side. Same thing for the width all the way across. 12 is the beginning part for the pool and then you have an X on this side and you have an X on this side and so you end up with 12 plus 2X. So if you were to do the math and do the FOIL method to this guy right here you're going to get 16 times 12 which is going to be 192. Let me check my math real quick on the calculator to make sure that's the case. 192. Good. And then 16 times 2x is going to be 32x. And then 2x times 12 is 24x. And then 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Minus the 192 that you have for the inside 12 times 16. What you will see is that the 192 and the 192 here cancel out. Guys, I talked about that. I said, guys, if you take away the small shape from the big shape, of course it's going to cancel out. And that leaves me with 4x squared, 32x and 24x is going to be 56x equals the area of the border. So this particular equation right here is the equation that represents the area of our border. Now you could figure out this in a couple of other ways too, but I tried to keep this as simple as possible for you and make it be the area of the big minus the area of the small equals the area of the border. So let's just say we only have enough money for, and here's my cat coming across the table here. Let's just say we only have enough money to afford 93 square meters of concrete. So what that means is, if we can only afford 93 square meters, then our area of our border needs to be equal to 93. So we take this guy right here, and we substitute 93 in for the area of the border, and we set this equal to zero to try to solve it. Now, uh, earlier part of the chapter we solved a lot of these using factoring because we had the ability to do that and that was all we had the ability to do with solving. Um, we also know a couple of other methods now, completing the square, the quadratic formula. Notice that this is a 4x squared and so as soon as I see that I'm going to try factoring first and then I'm going to try probably the quadratic formula. In this case because those numbers are so ugly I would probably go straight to the quadratic formula. So let's go for the song right? Let's go over here to the side x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Beautiful, huh? So we take our formula, we plug in x equals negative times the 56 
plus or minus the square root. B squared is 56 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 93, 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A, which would be 2 times 4. So you get negative 56 plus or minus. On the bottom, you're going to get 8. Inside the square root, we take out our calculator for this guy. That's okay. Um, and again, guys, you don't have to rely on the calculator, but something like 56 squared, I imagine most of us are going to need the calculator for, which is totally fine. And then I can also type in the rest of this, minus 4AC, right beside it. And I get 4,624, which is what's going to be inside here. But, since I'm talking about the width of my patio or my concrete around my swimming pool, I'm not going to leave my answer as this. I'm going to actually get my decimal approximation for this. So that's when I take the calculator and I say negative 56 plus the square root of that big ugly number, 4,624. And then I divide that by 8, so I get 1.5 for one of my answers. Then I do negative 56 minus the square root of that beautiful number, 4,624, and divide it by 8, and I get negative 15.5. So my answers are positive 1.5 and negative 15.5 when I do both the plus or minus version of this. So which one is going to be the answer? It's going to be 1.5. So, my answer for my width here is going to be that the width needs to be equal to, sorry, I had to put an approximate sign, but it's actually an exact answer, 1.5 meters in the width there. So, 1.5 meters is, is a little bit over, a little bit over four, four and a half feet. When you look at that, uh, that might not be big enough. So, what you would do then as a decision-making process, if you were really doing this for your swimming pool or your house, then you would say, you know, that's not wide enough. Maybe I want it to be two meters. If that's the case, if you want your X to be two meters, you can come down here to this little formula right here, this area of the border formula, and you can literally plug in two for X right here, do four times two squared plus 56 times two, and it will tell you exactly how much area you need to purchase of concrete. So if you did that, if you wanted it to be two, you'd have to purchase 128 square meters of concrete. But we only had enough money to afford 93, that's why we used 93 here to figure out 1.5. So you would have to make a decision then as a person that was doing something for your own house, your own pool, you'd have to make a decision then. Can I try to find some extra money so I want it to be two meters? Or can I just go with what I can afford? I can only afford one and a half meters all the way around to get my 93 square meters of concrete. So, there's your border problem. If you need to go back and rewind and see how I did some of that, go for it. Good luck.